He was appointed into the services of the University of Cape Coast in the year 1998. He was confirmed and elevated to the rank of lecturership in the year 2000. Due to his hard work and commitment, he was promoted to the rank of senior lecturership and again was promoted to the rank of associate professorship. Along the line, he became the director for the Institute of Educational Planning and Administration and again became the acting provost for the College of Distance Education. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is a full professor in educational leadership and the pro vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. This is Governance and Style. My name is Franco Tunfo. We'll be right back. Prof, good evening. Good evening. Uh, great to have you on our show. I'm also grateful having you here. Okay. Prof, uh, we know the youth out there uh, who are watching us would want to become like you. And we know you have come a very long way. Could you please tell us what has been your greatest weakness? My greatest weakness in life is that I hardly have time to rest. Wow. It is a greatest weakness. Wow. And it stems from the fact that my life began with struggle. Okay. I um, come from a very poor family. And so my mom, who used to be um, a trader, okay. had to be supported. Okay. And I remember in the Volta region, in a place called Monenu, um, also called Akachi. Okay. Yeah, I had to go in school before going to school. During break time, by then we have mornings and afternoons, it's shift system. And so um, I had to go lunch, go home, do some selling before going back, back, getting back to school. Okay. And I think that training has made it such that I hardly get time to rest. Wow. I'm always on the move. And I think that is my greatest weakness, especially wow. when I'm growing older. Wow. <laughs> also, we pay your submission. You have made that to understand that you are from a very humble beginning. And we are asking, how has that influenced your lifestyle? Thank you very much. I think in terms of uh, influence, I will say one thing that I can readily mention okay. um, is humility. Wow. Humility because I've grown to recognize that humility can send one to places. Okay. My dad, ex-sergeant Kwesi Udru, late, okay. used to tell us, well, I have nine siblings, uh, used to tell us, humble yourselves, okay. for humility will send you where money cannot send you. Uh, in Akan, he says, Kweku, uh, and I think this advice, coupled with my own experience, um, yeah. Prof, who is really uh, the person behind Professor George Kwekutukudru? I give, I give the credit to my dad. Okay. My dad was one person who was very poor. You know, a police sergeant, he retired as a police sergeant. Okay. Uh, my mom was a petty trader uh, who was frying donuts and then making this artificial pomade okay. uh, called uh, uh, sradi in, in our country, yeah, yeah. Uh, green. And because of that, Sponsoring, catering for the children's oral education is concerned uh, in terms of moving upward okay. beyond the then middle school was a challenge to my dad. Okay. And I quite remember when my dad told me because of his um, poor background financially, he could not sponsor me to the secondary school oh. after I had passed the then common entrance examination and therefore recommended that I took advantage of the free entrance to teacher training college okay. to train as a post middle teacher. teacher. And I said, teaching, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I said it because honestly, I hadn't seen any of my teachers at the time owning a bicycle tie. Okay. And I didn't want to become a teacher. 
you know. But my dad persistently kept encouraging myself and my sibling, kept telling us that he was very sure that if we could humble ourselves and then take advantage of the little that his financial background could take him in terms of education to the middle school level, then we could move beyond the middle school. Okay. And he will always call you and tell you that, look, it is very difficult for a poor father's son to recognize the genuineness of the love of his poor father. Say, okay. okay. mm -hmm. And we'll continue saying that we should be humble, for he was very sure that God will make a way. Okay. And I remember one of the uh, adages he used to tell us, Abua unidria unyame no prano. Na kumpra siyenti, that you will be where, somewhere. You are not engaged in grounds work. Well, you have special, the bed, you have a special one or all those things. Then they began envying me. Oh. <laughs> they began envying me. So, because I was a college prefect, and when I entered the advanced teacher training college too, okay. I became the, the SRC pre president. President, okay. Then I came to University of Cape Coast. I broke a history. Okay. Because when I came, I was in Casford. Okay. And I was told that nobody became an SRC president in the second year. Mm. And so when I said I was there to contest, I was discouraged that okay. I should wait and get to the third year. The third year. That I contested and, and I won. won. Wow. So I became the SRC president. That wow. was in 1992, 93. 93. Then in 93, 94, the NUCS, national NUC seat, by then it was rotating among the three traditional universities, yes, by then Tech, UCC, and Legon. So the seat came here in 1993-94, when I had yeah. handed over as NUCS president. So I contested and won that one too. Wow. You know. Then when I finished and became a, 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 a postgraduate student okay. here at the Institute for Educational Planning and Administration, the seat again went round and came back. And so I contested again. And you won. So in the student political history of this country, I'm the only person who has been a <laughs> national president of the National Union of Ghana students twice. That's so twice. You know. Wow. But the, my second uh, leadership couldn't last long because six weeks after taking over the mantle, I won a scholarship okay. to go to Cambridge, University of Cambridge. And so I had to resign. And then oh. when I resigned, my secretary, um, who is now a deputy minister of energy, Amin Anta, okay. Dr. Amin Anta, okay. has to take over. You know, then when I went to Cambridge for my, um, the, the, the first, I went there again for a master's before master's a PhD. PhD. I did something in school development and then uh, pr school and professional development. Okay. And during that program, the issue of leadership started coming. And because of my practical experience in leadership, Naturally, I developed interest in it. Okay. So, getting onto the PhD, I decided to specialize in leadership. Yes, so, it is the practical experiences I had gone in, mm. and the interesting experiences okay. associated with leadership. You know, okay. all these things led me on to specialize in educational leadership. Uh, wow, Prof, uh, you bear with me that a lot of people are reading programs they are not really interested in. Uh, so you ask somebody, uh, why are you reading this program? The person tells you, my daddy told me to do it. Do you think career guidance is very, very important? Career guidance is very, very, very important. Okay. You know, especially when the interest is not there. Okay. Then parents normally see beyond what children see. Okay. Like my dad in his context he saw that look he his position could not provide me with the type of education okay. that will help me make a choice mm. of a career that will benefit, benefit me you. and he had weighed the various opportunities and saw that teaching could open the chance for me but even that he didn't impose it on me okay he suggested i resisted he got other people involved 
I was counseled mm -hmm. and to finally I decided that I would take that that's but situations where parents will ask their children I know that there are some cases where parents have asked their children to go and do medicine, medicine. when the children themselves didn't have interest in that okay. I have about two cases where people have gone for medicine and along the line they stopped wow. you know because they didn't like it I know one who stopped to go and specialize in ICT. ICT. That is where his interest is, interest. you know. So, give all things being equal, it is not advisable for parents to impose programs. Children must have interest in it. If when, when the interest is there, they do it, go beyond all stresses, and are able to attain the goal. If the interest is not there, they do it. They do it because my father sees I should do it. Okay. And it doesn't help. <laughs> That is interesting. Yeah. From let's come to one interesting question. You are the pro vice chancellor, a position you've held for the past three years. Almost uh, three years. Almost three years. <laughs> I remember uh, when the competition was on, you had two great competitors, two female professors. Uh, that, that competition was very keen. And then you won. Uh, how? What did you do that your opponent didn't do? Are you that smart? <laughs> well, I, I always say, and I learned this during uh, student leadership. Leadership, days. okay. You see, if you want to become a leader, you want to occupy a leadership position, position okay. you don't build confidence in the electorate hmm. at the time of campaign. Okay. Okay. So as soon as you get into the organization, let people know that genuinely you are humble. Yeah. Let people know that genuinely you smile to anybody you meet. Okay. You do not wait till campaign time bef before you start forcing you start to smile. Okay. Or you start forcing to uh, greet people mm. on all those things. Yes, you know. So uh -huh. I, I am not uh, uh, bragging, but I think one thing that my father left for me, which has been um, a, an asset to That's me, it. is the okay. fact that I'm humble I'm and I smile humble. to everybody. Sure. I don't discriminate whether it is tribal, political, uh, religious. I don't mind whether you are a security person, a messenger, eating with you, using police. I mean, and I realized that during the elections, the campaign time, okay. I was really at a point I was surprised that people who didn't have voting rights, <laughs> like junior staff, senior, senior staff, staff, security people, <laughs> they were campaigning for me. Wow. <laughs> you know, and I remember this gentleman who was uh, the director of finance. I okay. met him uh, with uh, this, uh, um, how do you call it, my banner, banner kind of the small ones, the poster okay. small ones, one at the front, one at the back. <laughs> Interesting. And he was the try I say, hey, now, who want to have a baby now? We, 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 and yet, because Sebastian and Winnie are home, and you know what he said? No. Prof, I am a yard of moon to have a baby. Oh. Then, to be a, 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 to I have this the same blood. Blood. You also blood. have it. Okay. If tomorrow I die, mm. it is a six feet. Okay. If you die, it is a six feet. A six feet. And so, as for positions, they come okay. and go. I will not die with my position. That's fine. So it is the humility and other. Mm. And that is what really worked the trick out. Okay. You know. Okay. And then secondly, uh, <laughs> the campaign was was high. Mm -hmm. It was really high. Sure. You know. And I remember my campaign team, some came, came and told me, hey, look, there are pickups going around and all mm -hmm. those. Why don't we also hire an asset? Let's as make people see the need for okay. them to vote for me. Okay. They should vote for me because they are convinced I can do the job, do the not job. because I've been able to influence them. Influence them. Okay. And so that is what I think that is what makes a difference because I greeted everybody. everybody. I smiled to everybody. And I didn't start doing that when the campaign came up. And I think that is why it gave okay. me uh, um, Do you have an intention to contest again as the next provider chancellor? Uh, surprisingly, now, the, it wouldn't be by election. 
Okay. Uh -huh. It will be by election. It will be by appointment. appointment. You know, uh, because it was realized that some were the view that uh, because the practice had been that the vice chancellor would nominate you, mm -hmm. and then convocation will vote on you. When you come in, you either could to the, those who nominated you, mm -hmm. or to the vice chancellor okay. who <laughs> appointed you. Those who nominated you will tell you, look, we voted for you, and so you need to do what we say. What we say. The vice chancellor also says that I nominated you, okay. so you should be my walking stick. <laughs> Whatever I say, whether it is good or not, you have take, to it. take it. And so okay. if you, you happen to be someone who, by principle, will want the right thing to time, advise the vice chancellor as to what decision should be taken to ensure fairness on others, okay. then you become a target. Wow. So these things I mean, uh, make council to take a decision okay. that henceforth it wouldn't be by election. Okay. Prof, so it will be advertised. We want okay. to pick it from um, where it just ended. Yeah. Prof, we know you to be one person who loves to share your opinion on um, certain educational policies. And recently you made a comment that the governing council for the University of Education, Winneba, should be dissolved so that peace could continue uh, in the school. What is your take on that? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. You see, let, let me start from there. Okay. Why universities were created in okay. the first place? Okay. You know, universities were created to generate knowledge okay. and provide policy makers with objective evidence for them to, to progress po policies. Okay. In other words, an academia is one who should objectively share opinions on policies, okay. looking at the national benefits and others. So as an academic and a person in educational leadership, okay. a person who has actually taught um, higher education environments, uh, operations, and know very well that if there is polarization on university campuses, the student suffers. Okay. Nothing goes on. Um, outside, it may be presented at all as well. Okay. But if Inside. people, if lecturers don't have the peace of mind to lecture, they don't prepare well to lecture. Okay. They lecture, but that lecture is a surface lecturing, you know. And we also learn from history. In 19, no, no, 2009, I was appointed chairman of the governing council of the then Takradi Polytechnic, now Takradi Technical University. University. Now, when I was appointed chairman, the then rector was one professor, Apori. Apori He's yeah. a professor. Apori. Now, I took office only to be called by a deputy minister of education, education, one Dr. J.S. Annan, sure. called and instructed that I should ask the rector to proceed on leave. So I asked, Honorable, with all due respect, <laughs> for what purpose? Okay. Then he said there were cases of malfeasance against the rector. Hmm. Then I said, Honorable, with all due respect, once the council has been constituted and I am the chairman of the council, the act and the statutes provide that. I act on decisions of the council. So if there is anything against the rector, with all humility, would you refer that to the council for council to investigate? And then if it's found that he is really at fault. Then council can take a decision, and then I, as chairman, will chairman act on that decision. On that. Now, the deputy minister saw that to be an affront okay. to his authority. authority, and so he directed that I should be removed. Wow! Actually, I didn't get the letter removing me, but my counterpart, who was the chairman of Cape Coast. Polytechnic, Polytechnic, now Cape Coast Technical University, a uh, one uh, Dr. Kobner. Okay. You know, got a letter 
asking him to take oversight responsibility of Takradi Polytechnic because the, the, the council chairman had been removed. And I was trying hard to organize um, an orientation okay. program for council members. And I had arranged with the then executive secretary of the National Council for Tertiary Education, Dr. Paul Efa, to come mm -hmm. and do that. So I was in Accra to find out what the preparations were. When he met me, saw me, and then his first question was, Ah, George, what is happening in your university? Okay. Are you still the chairman? That was the question. the question. It was then I got to know that the deputy minister had told him that I had been removed wow. that because I had refused to act on his yeah, directive. But I stood on my ground because I swore an oath. And the oath said I should be guided by the act establishing the polytechnic and the statute governing the polytechnic. And my position as chairman had been clearly defined. And I hadn't seen tertiary education operating on proceed on leave. Mm -hmm. So I stood on my guns, and fortunately, I was not removed. Okay. And Professor Pori was also not removed. not removed. And so we depolarized the polarized situation there. Because it was like NDC, MPP, MPP like you cannot talk to all those things. That was depolarized. And Takradi Polytechnic made, made a, a much achievement, you know, so. a much achievement because of this thing. Now, with that history in mind, and then with experience from the University of Caicos itself, when between 1987 and 1990, the campus was so polarized that no two people could stand and talk, I mean, without suspecting each other, you know. <laughs> and it was only when an interim advisory committee was formed to take over the administration of the University of Cape Coast. And the committee finished its work and made proposals and appointed a new vice chancellor that UCC had actually um, enjoyed the peace that okay. we have now. Okay. So if I look at what is, was happening at the University of Education in Winneba, the fact that a lecturer and academic can be asked to leave his bungalow, and for the fact that he wasn't really leaving, people should go there and remove the doors mm. from that. The fact that people had become so panicky because you don't know whether the person you are talking to belongs to Professor Avoke, the f former the vice chancellor, okay. or Professor Avobroni, the current vice chancellor. Yes, chancellor. And the fact that evidence on the ground shows that the chairman of council himself was a pro vice chancellor of the university had an issue with the University of okay. and so people were also scared. That itself, I thought no. As an alumnus of that place, when it was okay. advanced teacher training college, and as a person in educational leadership, it should be of concern. Sure. It is based on this that I propose to the Minister of Education that for sanity to prevail, okay. dissolve the governing council, Ask the acting, acting vice chancellor to step aside, okay. get an interim management committee to sanitize the place, and then get a new vice chancellor so that we can move on, just as University of Cape Coast has sure. moved on. And I got, I, I listened to the, the yeah. feedback and others, and of course, um, uh, Honorable Afenuma Afenu Marquez, yeah, for yeah. instance, called the vice chancellor. Uh, Professor Gatiam yeah, yeah. and asked him to tell me to retract Those my comments. comment. And I found that very unfortunate. And so upon advice of the Vice Chancellor, I called him. He was very nice. And we had a very um, genuine conversation. And I got to know that in 2010, he, Honorable, wanted to lecture okay. at Winneba. And everything had gone through. But according to him, um, one Dr. Berquin, who is who was now at the center of the confusion there, advised against his empo employment because he alleged, because he was an MPP. MPP. Then 10 years down the line, the trend had changed. <laughs> NPP is now in office. In office. So, if you 10 years ago didn't allow me to be appointed because I was an <laughs> MPP, then now it is my turn. You should yes, also go. Oh, okay. Ah, and so I, 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 and he agreed with me that 
we should fight against polarization. Okay. But he told me that polarization started 10 years ago in Winneba, <laughs> when he, his appointment was politicized. Okay. And my concern has always been that universities should not be politicized. Okay. Universities should not be polarized. If universities are polarized and uh, politicized, then the future of our nation That's is very bleak. Uh, let's 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 come to you as a person. Yeah. Uh, we know that there's a saying that behind every successful man, there is a good woman. Uh, we know that you've come a long way. Uh, who is this be beautiful and you know uh, good woman who has really managed you to this point? Well, the saying that saying I agree, but for me and with the experience that I have, okay, I would say that behind a uh, beside. Okay, Every decide. successful man, there is a successful, successful uh, woman. Okay. And this um, woman, uh, I simply call G because she. she's Georgina okay. and I am George. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, she's a lecturer okay. in this very university okay. in the sociology, Department of Sociology and Anthropology. Okay. He's Dr. Georgina Ya Odro. She's been of great support me throughout okay. my uh, PhD studies okay. uh, the way she's held the fort for me and okay. the pieces of advice that you gave at times when I'm depressed mm. and you get home and you are received with a smiley face mm. <laughs> then <laughs> you, I cannot say anything that no. to say that this uh, woman that we have. No. So he's Obaya Georgina. Obaya. Yes. So how long have you been married? We've been married for 22 years. 22 years, wow. 22 years, yeah. <laughs> what a wonderful experience. <laughs> 22 years, so we are waiting for the next three years by God's grace, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, to celebrate uh, us. So, um, but we know you have um, an inaugural lecture which comes off somewhere in September. Um, could you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, and before I start, I must say that I, I really thank God okay. um, for how far he's brought me academically. Okay. If years back, someone had told me that I would also become a professor, I would have cursed that person mm -hmm. because my condition never, never gave me hope mm -hmm. that I could climb the academic ladder. But it also teaches me a lesson because I remember my form four teacher, one Mr. Dazi, would always call me a professor. Wow. I remember when I was teaching my headmistress, one Mrs. Degbatu, who always called me a professor. professor. So I've learned a lesson that I should be careful what I say with my say with oh, to the younger ones. Um, the inaugural lecture, it's to thank God in the first place. Okay. And then the secondly, I, it, it's, it's a requirement. Okay. Once you become a professor, you need to share okay. the area of your profession. Okay. And so I want to look at the issue of national character. Okay. Because um, I think that we are Ghanaians, but we are not behaving as Ghanaians. Mm. We are behaving like fragmented elements, Ghanaians, because it does appear our commitment is to our political parties. Our commitment is to our religious groupings. Mm -hmm. Our commitment is to our ethnicism rather than the nation. Mm -hmm. So I want to look at how universities can help turn this thing around, hinging on mindset education and leadership. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm going to look at. So, mm -hmm. And then in the context, I will also want to cite examples okay. of issues that are polarizing our nation. Okay. So that when there is national discourses, when there are discourses of national interest, mm -hmm. people cannot air their opinions. Okay. For instance, this double track school system, system. I've heard a whole lot of things. The free SHS, a whole lot of things. And I remember free SHS, I made a contribution when sure. it came. I cautioned the Minister of Education, look, sure. let us not rush. Okay. In implementing this, let's take the first year to engage all stakeholders. Let's sensitize people. Let us know what really goes into the free SHS. Let us find out whether the free SHS will be for everybody mm. or not. Those things. But the Minister of Education gave me my uh, <laughs> lashes here yes. and there, you know. <laughs> and I think that these are some of the things I want okay. to do. And I strongly believe that as a nation, after politics, let's look at the nation. The nation. 
So you know, when is it? 13th where, September. Where exactly? At, is it at the uh, School of Medical Sciences. Medical Sciences. Okay. And you are invited. Thank you very so much. So thank Prof you. Be there. Okay. Uh, before we let you go, a lot of people are watching us, and uh, a lot of people want to become like Professor George or Drew. Uh, what are your general words of encouragement and advice to the youth out there? Thank you. To the young ones, and from my own observation and experience, what's happening, I want to say that the young ones should not chase money. Okay. They should prepare the grounds mm -hmm. for money to chase them. In other words, you know, life is such that it's, it's such that it has building blocks. Patiently, young people should lay the blocks that will push them up. Now, young people are chasing money. So instead of spending time to study, he's looking for ways of getting money. So the foundation is not laid upon which he or she can stand for the future. So that is my first question. The second and my first suggestion, the second suggestion to the young ones is you should humble yourself. If you humble yourself, no matter your situation, God will provide help, wow. just as he has provided help for me. Okay. I've never attended secondary school, and yet I've been to one of the best universities in the world, University of Cambridge. Okay. So humility can make a difference in your life as a young person. Thank humility you. can make a difference in your life as a young person. Prof, thank you very much thank for your you time. Too. Thank you for this. My time. guest has been Professor George Kwekutoku Odru, the Pool Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. My name is Franco Tunfo. This is Governance and Style. And remember, humility can take you where money cannot. Bye bye.